Good afternoon and thank you so much for joining me for day 14 of Love Your Lettering, 31 Days to Love Your Lettering. Good afternoon! <laughs> ah, let's get adjusted here, light and all that kind of nonsense. Okay, got you in the tripod. So hopefully today will go a little bit smoother than yesterday. Thank you guys so much for coming and joining trying to get my desk situated a little bit. I've been away from the desk all day today and since yesterday afternoon. So it's a little bit messy around here. Hi, Tina. Hi, Elisa. It's good to see you guys. So we're still talking about using the calligraphy pen and today we're going to be doing italic calligraphy. So hopefully this will be fun. It might be a little bit frustrating because you're still adjusting to that broad nib pen, but I promise that it's not that hard. Um, it just takes a little bit of practice and kind of playing with these different uh, strokes. Um, so again, this is our 2.30 broadcast for Love Your Lettering. Hi, Amanda. Um, so once I begin the formal introduction, I'll switch into demonstration mode and I won't do interaction until after the demonstration is complete. If you have questions and stuff, I will answer all that towards the end, I'm getting my pens ready. Um, and the purpose of that, I'm trying to work on getting some of these videos that are less um, chatty so that I can move them over to YouTube for those that are just looking for the instruction without the chat um, to help save a little bit of time on those those airings. So we'll see how that works. This is all very new to me. Our 9.30 p.m. Um, sessions, which my 9.30 girls, I owe you guys like a big long session to make up for this week. Um, yeah, still catching up. We're... Go ahead. Um... We're definitely, we're catching up, sorry about that lunch upstairs, um, and I will kind of get my, my, my nighttime people caught up a little bit. She's been running fever off and on. Um, it started overnight, Monday night, and then yesterday during the day, she seemed fine. She had perked up and all, and then yesterday it was like dinner time, and she was crashing fast, and she's kind of run fever all day, um, since last night off and on, um. So she goes from really perky self to, I just want you to hold me, and that's when I know the fever is back up. So, uh, But no other symptoms, so we're trying to just ride it out and keep her comfortable and keep her hydrated. Yeah, but thank you so much for asking, and my evening girls, thank you so much for understanding that I've been kind of MIA this week. Um, we will catch up. We really will, because once I get a nice block, we can plow through three lessons together. <laughs> So hopefully that won't be too much of a roller coaster. So with that said, and it's just about like 2.30 something, so we'll go ahead and get started. So thank you so much for joining me this afternoon. My name is Lisa. I blog at creatively.com, looking at life creatively. And right now we're in the midst of a series called 31 Days to Love Your Lettering. Today is day 14, and we're talking about italic calligraphy with a calligraphy marker. So we're going to go over some basic um, steps of creating italic letters. So I am going to go ahead and flip the camera so that we can start the demonstration. And I will also give you information about links to find all this instruction. Okay, so there's a look at um, an italic alphabet. And that's what we'll be working on today. Um, if you are new to these videos and need to find more information, you can find me at creatively.com slash loveyourlettering. We'll bring you all the information about lettering series on Creatively, um, as well as an index to the complete list of the topics for this series. 31 Days to Love Your Lettering is an introductory series. It brings you through improving your handwriting and learning, getting started with creative lettering and little bits of calligraphy and brush lettering. Um, so we've got facebook.com slash creatively is another place to find me. And if you're on Twitter, Instagram, or Periscope, I'm at creatively. I do keep some penmanship boards and quote boards on Pinterest where I'm creatively made. And most of my Periscope videos can be found archived on catch.me slash creatively. So let's get started with today's um, italic lettering differs from the print that we did yesterday with the calligraphy pen mostly in that we are going to add 
a slight bit of slope or slant to the letters and we're going to have those entry strokes and exit strokes. Um, so I am working with the Pigma Calligrapher. It's a 3.0 millimeter marker. Um, so that's what I'll be working on and I have a five square per inch grid notebook from Staples. And I'm working landscape just because it gives me more room on the screen for, for you all to see what I'm doing. And then I have printed off a guide sheet from printablepaper.net. This is the italic landscape. And now I, I will probably not fully use that much of a slant. I believe that this is a 60 degree slant, um, but it's helpful for me I'm not sure that you can see maybe the ghosting of the lines through. It's helpful for me just to kind of stay somewhat on track. There are also script guides that are slightly less of um, that slope, but I was having an issue printing those out, but you might find them helpful. And if you have taped your pages together, if you've left the top and bottom open, you should be able to slip a guide sheet right in there. And on printablepaper.com, they're available both in landscape and portrait, so you can print that to whatever best meets your needs. Okay, so towards the end of yesterday's video, I explained that when, when we're dealing with the broad nib pens, and you want to figure out how best to write with that pen or what size it is best to write with that pen, one way of doing it, and the most recommended way, is to set up um, this little checkerboard of the width of the nib. And that is going to tell you how big is kind of like the gauge of that pen. So five, five nib widths is your X height or your, like your minuscule letters or the bowls of the letters. Sorry, I'll label that with a different pen. So here's your X height. And your cap height would be seven. And your A senders may go a little bit above that and your D senders a little bit below that. But that will give you the basic idea of what you can expect to comfortably write with the pen that you have is setting up that little grid. So that means for me that my X height is about three boxes high and my cap height is about four boxes high on this paper. So I'm going to begin with the lowercase or minuscule letters and I'll start with the A. Now yesterday for printing I did go out of order and it was mainly to get the feel for which letters started with the bowl, which letters started with the stem, but today we're going to just go ahead with alphabetical order because <laughs> it helps us keep things a little more straight. So with italic writing I'm going to be keeping the pen at about that 45 to 60 degree angle. It means that the tip of Let's see if I can zoom for you. It means that the tip of the pen, the nib, is going to be at about a 45 to 60 degree angle from the baseline that I'm writing on. Okay, so the A begins up top and comes down, goes up, and then you have the stem that comes down and exits up. Your B will begin at the A sender and come down and the bowl will come out this way. So there we go. So it's that that exit or the entrance may be an upstroke, but most of your strokes will be downstrokes. Okay, our C leads in over here, almost like the A except we're not going to attach a, a, an A sender or stem. I'm going to skip a little bit because I've got a hole right here. Um, so I'm going to begin the D with the bowl. So again, same as that A, the C, the D, and my, my A sender here. Start from the top. Go. 
So as you can see, I'm pretty much writing straight up and down. I'm not even paying a whole lot of attention <laughs> to that angle. And if it's most comfortable for you to practice your italic letters more um, perpendicular to your baseline, go ahead and do that. I mean, you can certainly maintain that that higher angle there. Um, but for starting, you may want to just work on keeping that pen consistent. And if it's more comfortable to do that straight up and down, practice that way. If you find that it's more comfortable to work at an angle, almost like your natural cursive, then go ahead and do at that slight slope or slant. Okay, our E is going to be very much like our A, C, and D began, except I'm going to start just a slight bit lower on that pull, and then I'm going to bring it down. Okay. The F, I'm going to start at the top of the A sender and bring it down below the baseline for the D sender. I'll come up here to do that tail or exit and then cross, crossbar. Okay, and now the G again, similar shape as the A, the C, the D, and the E, except now we're going to bring that D sender down. And our H, start with A sender, and I did not add an exit stroke there because this letter is not complete. You're going to need to do that arch and I will put an exit stroke there. And let's get the eye in there as well. Okay. Now for the J. Now I'm trying to make sure that I leave room. So imagine that this space right here, I'm going to leave the same amount of space as I left for my X height. I'm going to leave space for my ascenders and descenders to have room to not collide. So my J will come down here. My K will start up. Again, slightly above the cap height. And I'm going to come this way. And I like to drop that just a tiny bit below the baseline. L is another ascending letter. The M will come in three strokes. We'll come down with this stem and then create an arch. And then I'm going to do an exit stroke on that one. Okay. The N will be the stem, the arch, the leg, and the exit there. The O. Technically, that would be two downstrokes, but I think brush lettering has spoiled me. That would be a proper O. Okay. So the P is going to start with the down or the descending stroke and then come up for the bowl. Q, we can do the Q two different ways. We're going to start with the bowl and we can come down and do an exit that way. And if, if, you're, if your stem is not meeting with your bowl, you can go back over that stroke. Okay, another way to do the Q would be similar to our O and add the tail that way. Okay. Of course, it looks a lot like our uppercase Q, um, but that's okay. It's really going to depend on what you want the final styling of your lettered piece to look like. Okay, so now we'll get the R. So we've got that stem and then the arch. The S will begin there, come around to the spine. And then we're going to bring that third stroke over. And I did drop my S below below the baseline. It's kind of a tad bit flourishy, but not really. <laughs> I'll do one right within the X height. 
So, and that would really depend on um, what other letters are in your words. Okay, so there's keeping the X height. Now the T has an ascender, but it's kind of an exception to the rule. It's similar to the F where it doesn't really go all the way up the way most ascenders do. It's coming somewhere between the cap height and the X height. So you've got your stem and your crossbar or the, the jot. Now our U is kind of an inverted N here. So we're going to start, come up, then we'll start, come down there and have an exit. Our V has a bit of that diagonal, if you remember from the basic strokes that we did the other day. And then the other arm of that is going to come down and meet that point. And the W, we're going to start with the two, two diagonals there. We'll bring this one to meet there. And now we're going to come back around. Our X, we'll start with very similarly to the W and the V. And then we're going to cross this. I'm going to drop it a little bit below the baseline and I'll you can do that at the top one too. Now our Y, again starting fairly similar to the others, and let's get the spent stem or spine of that, and our Z. First stroke, then a diagonal, and then we're going to do a bowl down there. You could certainly keep it on the baseline. That's another letter that will depend on what you want the the styling of your your word to look like. Okay, so there are our minuscule or lowercase letters. Now I'll move on to capital letters or uppercase or majuscule, however you prefer. Okay, so again, my cap height was seven was seven nib widths high. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, which ends up being four of the, <laughs> thank you, four of the, our, our boxes here of the, of the grid. Okay, so now my A, I'm going to come with a down and I'm going to come down this way. And if you pen is lifting off the edge, you can go back over there. So I like to put that there and a nice crossbar. Now let's do the B. We have this stem and we're going to start a little outside for the entry stroke. Bring that down. B. C is just going to be a bigger version of that lowercase one. D is going to have a stem. And then I'll come up here and bring that bowl down to meet the base. The E will start with a similar stem. And I'll do the baseline there. I do like to bring a bit of a flourish stroke down on the capital. Okay, our F, very similar to the E. And again, continuing that down. Okay, our G. It's gonna be very much start like a C, except I'm going to bring it up a bit, and then I will drop this down. Now, H is going to be a little bit similar in styling to the A. H. I. The J will be very similar to the I, except that it's going to descend 
and I'm going to bring that top down a bit. K will begin similar to our D, E, and F. Again, I'm checking that the angle of the nib of my pen is correct so that I keep that thick and thin going. L, very similar. We can bring this top down a bit. Okay, the M may feel a little bit tricky because <laughs> catching these angles and keeping it proportional takes a bit of hand to find a styling that you like. So you may have to check, check your grip to make sure you've got the angle. Come up and go back down with a small exit stroke and you can add a beginner of an entry there. It would actually be a finial since it's the last one I did. Now the N is going to be quite similar to the M. I'm going to come down at that angle, come up just a tad, then I'm going to come down in the opposite direction, come up. Okay, our O very similar to how we did the lowercase, except now we're bigger. The P will start with the same stroke as our E, F, H, K, and L. So we're going to bring that bowl down that way, and we'll add our Q, very much like the O. So for some reason, it's easier for me to get that slope or slant with my capital letters than it is with my lowercase Q. Our R is going to be much like our P. And the T will start with the stem. And let's see, we'll go here to cross it. And I will also go down that way. Let's get the U. Very similar to the lowercase. Same with the V. I'm going to come down and meet that point. Oh, goodness, I did miss this. I'll get that. I'm so sorry. Okay, that was very similar to our lowercase, our X. The Y. our Z. And let's get that S. <laughs> it belongs over here, but I skipped it. Okay, so I'm actually going to start with the spine. So I'm going to come down, then I'll go back up to the top, and I'll come down to the bottom and meet there. You can certainly go at a, a greater slope as well. So I'm going to do this spine stroke first and then come out to get that top and come from the bottom and get that one. Okay, so there's our <laughs> full alphabet. Um, got lowercase and uppercase, a little out of order there. <laughs> All right. Now that we've got all those letters written, if you guys had any questions or needed to see something a second time, I would love to answer your questions. Thank you very much, Natalie. All right, so we've got our italic letters. And yeah, so you see 
my guide sheet is under there, but my letters were really pretty perpendicular to the paper. Um, I'm kind of out of practice of using the slant or slope. That's why I like the script guide a little bit better because it's not as much. Um, the S is one stroke. Um, you can, but if you want to make sure that you're concentrating on keeping, maintaining that angle, you will want to break it into the three. Because um, I think when I tend to do it in one stroke, um, I sometimes get a little bit too fast um, and I'll miss that there is a def there is a definition between between those three. Um, so it probably in quick pan in, in quick view it doesn't look much different. Did the, the O? Yeah, that's what happened. And so it changes the shape just a, a little bit um, to do it in the two strokes rather than the one. Um, and that may be just my hand how it does that. So but I think it's also because here I am using a calligraphy marker. So the ink is going to flow whether I'm going down or up, you know, so it doesn't matter. But if I were using a dip pen, the ink is only going to flow on the downstroke. It's really not going to flow well, especially with the broad. Let me get one of those out to show you. Okay. So if I were using one of these broad nibs, if I were to try to go from down to up, what it's going to do is it's going to scrape the paper and splatter the ink because these, these nibs, or if you're right-handed, you'll be holding it this way, um, these nibs are, draw, are made to draw the ink out in the downstroke. Okay, see, you are using a nib, so it would be completely different. And so that's why there's that little bit, um, yes, with the dip pen, you're going you're gonna to be going always down to draw the ink out. Oh, it dries pretty quick. And, of course, I think when I'm demonstrating, I'm going a little bit slower than I might naturally. Um, and this one is hitting, it's hitting the paper and kind of absorbing and drying fairly quickly that I'm not having much issue with smudging. If I were using the dip pen, it would be a whole different ball game. The, the position of my paper would change. Um, okay, that's from using a nib. Yes, it is. Because there isn't, some things carry over, but some things don't. And, um... The marker, I think, is good when you're first learning because you're not worrying about the splattering because that's probably one of the most frustrating things when you're learning with the nib is that you have ink splatter, you have blobs that sometimes come out because it doesn't flow evenly. Like, depends, like my reservoirs here are a little bit bent. Um, so I just find that for the purpose of introductory calligraphy, I do prefer the markers. It gives you a little bit more freedom to concentrate on the letter forms and less worry about getting consistent ink flow. So that is why for this series specifically I recommended the markers. Um, of course I also think that the bridge between the two would be the Pilot Parallel Pens. Um, now these are these are a nib system, it's a metal nib system, but the two plates are parallel instead of um, instead of the reservoir and the nib being slightly offset. Um, uh, oh! <laughs> okay, well, to be fair, these barrels and nibs have been with me since high school, so it's, yeah, I bought some pens. <laughs> So the parallel pen I like because with those plates parallel, I can have a little more freedom with up and down, where if I was using the dip pen, it would not do that. I would have to, and also because if you see my my hand position, because I mirror right-handed, it has me pushing the pen, which with a calligraphy nib, you can't push the pen. You have to pull it. Um, 
So, oh, these have, I'll show you, let me unscrew it if I don't get ink all over myself. Okay, so the parallel pens can be filled two ways. You can buy the Pilot cartridges or you can actually fill this barrel. It will work either way. So I have filled this with gouache before and that works nicely or you can fill it with the with the little cartridge. So I think they're, these come in 10 packs. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> in the one of the last posts of the series, I did demonstrate these, because I do find that if you're wanting to do, if you're wanting to get a little bit more formal than the marker, the parallel pen is a good economical way to go. You can usually find these pens for other for under ten dollars, um, and so and then it does give you flexibility with the color that you put in there, and they come completely apart to clean out. So I really I like these. I am actually going to probably buy more of these in the future so I can have a few colors set up at once rather than having to deal with cleaning the nibs. Is that awful or what? Um, Elisa, you can ask a non-calligraphy question. That's fine. We're in our chatty portion. Um, I was able to find this pen at Hobby Lobby, but I will say that on Amazon, it's cheaper. And you can buy a set of, the, of three different sizes, I think, three or four different sizes on Amazon for a little bit less than you would be able to get them individually um, at Hobby Lobby. I have not seen them in Joann's, and I have not seen them in Michael's. Um, but I know Jet Pens has them too, but I believe for if you have prime shipping, Amazon's really the way to go. What black pen doesn't bleed through the Bible and doesn't smear with watercolor? Ooh, that's a tricky one. Um, let me see. I have I've only watercolored in my Bible once. So let's see. So thank you for those of you that joined us for the calligraphy um the calligraphy lesson. I know we're going to we're going to be chatty here for a minute. So all right. So let's see. Here's what I here's my one watercolor page. Um, <laughs> yeah. This was done with um I want to say that this is a millennium pen. This is a millennium. It's probably a 1, a 01. Um and that is a pigment ink, so it should be water fast. Um or waterproof and I did I drew in lightly then I did the watercolor and then I drew the black the the pen part again um, but this watercolor went over the pen um, and it didn't it didn't run it didn't bleed when I put the watercolor over it and again I did fairly dry brush um, I had a lot of shadowing um, but very little bleed through. Just on the places where I've held the pen too long, it allows the ink to seep through the fibers. If you're just writing along, it should only do the shadowing. You almost bought the Micron in your back. Oh, okay. Yeah, the Micron should be water fast also. Like I said, I use them fairly um, interchangeably, except that I keep the Millenniums in my Bible bag and my Microns are on my big art desk. Um, but Elisa, I would recommend if you have um, a blank page in the back of your Bible. So I had this blank page and use that as your test. So draw out, make sure your pen it should say pigment ink because pigment should not run when water touches it. Um, so you're going to want to look for pigment ink, waterproof, fade proof, and non-bleeding. Um, if you start to find those things listed on that pen, it should be fine. However, what you're probably going to need to do is write, make sure it's completely dry, which means you might want to work on another portion and then go back over and test with watercolor over it. Um, let's see, I don't know that I have any water in any of my brushes on the desk. I probably don't. So I'm just gonna hang on one second while I find my water brush. So, how has your day been otherwise? I'll chat instead of kind of walking away. All right, so I've got a water brush. Let's go. 
Okay. Yard work. I know it's gorgeous out today, but I've got to pack a house and I'm not going to live here next month. So I'm not doing any yard work here. Yay. Okay. So here's my, my micron, the zig and the co allergies are no fun. That's probably the least favorite part of, um, of the spring. So now of course this ink, this pen was certainly dry because this was done months ago and I did um, the watercolor right over it and I didn't really saturate the brush but it was definitely wet and none of those colors have bled the ink so none of those. Um, let's see Sharpie pen let's get some more color okay the pen tail that is not, that's a water-based ink. <laughs> I can tell that. Okay. Hmm. See, now, I did not expect that that wouldn't run because this is a water-based ink. But I guess because it's fully dry, um... See, now I know that some of these pens are water-based, so it's pretty surprising to me that they're not, they're not running. That one is, okay. And that's a ballpoint pen, so that shouldn't. And here's the Pigma. The Pigma Calligrapher is a pigment ink, so that shouldn't run either. Okay, so there we go. Let's, let's let that dry and see if it pulls any color. Um, You know, I like some, some pen and ink <laughs> tangents. So this is the Copic Multiliner, which is a, a pigment ink, the Zig and the Micron. Those are all pigment inks and none of them, the black ink did not smear with the watercolor going over it. Um, the Sharpie pen also did not smear. The Tradio did, and that is a water-based. I know that that's water-based. Now, the Kurataki Foods, those are water-based, but surprisingly, because this ink was dried from months ago, it did not run when the watercolor went over it. So I'm wondering, there must be a threshold where it sets better that the watercolor didn't pull it. The same with the Tombow. This is Furunosuke. I didn't write out the whole word, but I know that that's what that is. And that didn't run, and that's a water-based ink also. Um, so I will say, yes, it probably was not dry. It does take the microns time to set. I will say that I've seen them smear when I thought that they shouldn't. Um, but I think the difference is really letting them dry. Now these are Sakura, the Pigma calligraphers, and that didn't run either. But again, these, these black words were written quite a while ago. So, um, and here's the back of the page and it didn't cause much bleed through. So I can definitely see the ghosting or the shadowing of the paint and the writing, but it's not, it's not bled through or saturated the paper. You can see just kind of the start and end of my numbers and letters. Can I share how I wrote on the edges of my pages? Yeah, I can. So you're welcome, Elisa. It's my pleasure. That's why I love playing with the test page and that's why it's handy for me to have a bunch of different pens. See, I'm totally justifying <laughs> having all my pens. Um, all right, so on, on the spine of my Bible, it was definitely easier to work on these sides. For here, what I did was I did close it shut and I think this will only work if you do not have foiled edge pages. Yes, I know, I'm totally a penaholic, pen addict, pen enabler, and pen snob. Okay, so I have, I've got it banded shut, and then when I did do the lettering, what I did was I stuck a ruler between the book binding and the leather cover, and what that did was, and I don't know if I can even make this really visible but what having that ruler there what it did was pushed out 
where these pages would normally kind of concave in, it gave me a more straight edge to work on. And then I did use a pigment ink pen to do that. And it took a couple passes. Like I would recommend doing your writing in pencil first and then lettering over it. Because if you do it in the pencil first, you'll get the shapes that you want. And then you're just really tracing and filling in with the black. So hopefully that helps a little bit. That's how I did that. And then I did Tombow and water over it after I did the writing. So you could certainly do the coloring first and then do the writing over it. That would probably be smarter to make sure that you don't smear. Um, did I squeeze hard while writing? Squeeze the book? Yeah. I did hold it closed fairly tightly yes because you don't want you don't want the pages to open up while you're writing on it so I did make sure I was holding it pretty tightly thank you Robin I hope she does too because it's not fun having a sick toddler I'm sure you all know that so that is our italic calligraphy for the afternoon so hopefully that was helpful if you have any other questions I'd be happy to try and answer them I am aiming to be on at 9.30 tonight for our 9.30 session. You're so welcome. Baby Boxer Mom, please remind me of your name if you don't mind. If you do, that's fine. I don't, I, but, but I do like to address you guys by name. So I am part of the mom, Carrie, it's nice to meet you. Um, I'm part of the Mommy Scopes Mom Hop tonight, which I thought was last night, but it's tonight. It's tonight starting at 8.30 over at Amy, who is Polka Dot's Wishes here on Periscope. So she's going to kick it off, and then I'm second in line, so or third in line. No, I don't even remember. I have to check. So what we're going to be doing is kind of flashing through our planner. So I'll be showing my um, non-glam planner. So... <laughs> because <laughs> I'm not a glam planner and sometimes I don't like to admit that because there's lots of people with beautiful beautiful planners with lots of colors and stickers and all that and mine doesn't look like that mine just has a lot of writing so I'm going to be showing my non-glam planner um, and encouraging those of us that don't want to be pretty planners that's okay um, <laughs> so yes it does take all kinds and there's room for all of us in the planner community because um, Amy polka dots wishes let me um, let me put that on here do, 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 do. okay so oops you just use the phone <laughs> and I figured that. <laughs> okay, so if you follow Amy at Polka Dots Wishes, um, around 8.30 is when she'll kick off the mom hop tonight. Okay, which should be lots of fun. Everybody's going to be just doing a walkthrough quickly of their planners um, and then passing off to the next person. I believe I'm first or second in line after Amy. So, and then at, hopefully everything is good to go in 9.30. I'll be back on for the evening edition of day 14, but I'm gonna try and catch them up too if I can. We'll see, it might be crazy. So, there we have it. So, yeah, I've got a paint, I've got a pack, right? I bought two cases of boxes last night, so it's about time I get started, right? And I'm getting ideas for painting my craft room in the new house. So, because currently the walls are red, and I love red walls. My kitchen has red, but red walls don't work in a craft room. So, I've got to brainstorm how I'm going to do that. So, you're very welcome. So, if no one else has any questions pen related, I'm going to go ahead and hop off here, make sure I get lunch before my other children get home. And I will talk to you guys later. I hope you have a great day, and we'll see you tomorrow for Aqua and Coral. I love those, but I just don't want them on the wall because I want to do canvases um, brightly colored that I can switch out often. So, I'm going, I think I'm going three walls white because two of the walls in my craft room are windows. So I just have really two 
full walls and I'm going to do one of them white and I think the other one I'm going to do blackboard because I'm going to miss my blackboard wall so I'm going to need one of those. So tomorrow we're going to talk about mixing the italic calligraphy and a fine point pen to add flair to our letters. So I hope you have a great night. I will see you later. If not, I'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day.